Hello, and welcome to Model Airplane Maker. Painting markings on your models provides advantages over using decals, not the least of which is more control and consistency at the late parts of your build. In this video, I'll show you an easy and effective method to get started with painting markings. The demonstration will be applying Japanese markings, but these techniques can be used for any other type. So get out your masking tape and some fresh blades, and let's go. During the Second World War, the Japanese Army Air Force and the Navy marked all of their aircraft primarily with red discs called Hinamaru. This is roughly translated to the sun's red disc. There were regulations as to how these markings were to be applied. For example, on a light colored aircraft, it would simply be the red Hinamaru in six locations. On a dark colored aircraft, that red disc would be within a white surround. And for home defense aircraft, the red disc would be within a white band. And of course, there are always exceptions. For example, there are some aircraft marked with a red disc inside of a green surround instead of a white one. So, as with all things model making related, if you are going for historical accuracy, references will be key. As you can see, I'm painting a Japanese fighter with a home defense band, in this case, a Key 27 Nate. I've used the drawings included with the decal sheet as my reference for the size of the band in relation to the size of the red disc. Since I'll be masking these discs with Tamiya masking sheet, I'll make my life much simpler by making the masks the width of the white band. This method also makes it simple to paint the discs in the middle of the white bands later on. Tamiya masking sheet is the same material as Tamiya masking tape. Obviously, it's wider. I first measure out the necessary width of the white band. But before I make that cut, I make sure to use a fresh blade, because I'll level with you. Masking is not the most exciting aspect of making models, but the job is made a little bit easier with a fresh blade. Fresh blades will make more precise cuts on a single pass, and the paint edge of the mask will have no wrinkles or fraying, and that's the whole point. We want to avoid bleed through or any of, uh, any of that. Up next is the Ulfa Circle Cutter. I measured the width of the red discs on the decal sheet and I divide this measurement in half. I use a ruler to set the tool. Again, when using the Ulfa cutter, changing that blade regularly will get you best results. I set the point or needle in the middle of the mask and I lightly and carefully cut the disc out. Unfortunately, my hand got in the way of the camera to show these cuts. However, if you've ever used a protractor to draw circles, it's exactly the same concept. My advice here is to make a couple of light cuts and not press hard into the mask. You'll have a much smoother mask this way. Once all the discs are cut out, it's just a matter of separating the masks and getting ready for the next step. If you are lucky when masking bands or stripes, the marking will fall along a panel or rivet line. In this case, mine fell along the line of an aileron, and that is where I need to set one side of the mask. I'm using standard Tamiya tape to do this, and no matter how new or well kept the tape is, I always cut a fresh edge. Again, this is to make the paint edge clean and to minimize the possibility of paint bleed under the mask. Make sure to line up this first tape piece properly. I measured it in relation to a panel line. 
then this mask line will be continued under the wing. A couple other masking tips. To me, a tape is very durable and you can really stretch it. So I recommend stretching the tape over any part that you're masking and that way you can really press it down with your finger, making sure there's absolutely no ripples or pockets where some of your spray might accidentally go underneath. When you meet the two pieces of tape, top and bottom, Make sure you seal them together at the edge of the wing. You could just fold the tape ends and press them together and that should do it. Now I'm going to be setting the other side of the white band. I'm using a discarded piece of the masking sheet that I used to cut the Hinomaru masks. This is the exact width of the white band. Using some tape to set it in place, I then place fresh cut masking tape on the other side. Now we have a perfect mask for the white band. Before I forget, whenever painting with masks, it is best to press them in as much as possible before you start spraying paint. And this will prevent, again, any bleed through going underneath the mask. As you can see, I now have the white bands painted and I can place the masks for the red discs. Since I measured those masks out previously, they should be the correct width and the disc will be at the center of each white band. The trick here is to place the disc in the right spot on the wing. It might take a couple of attempts to do so. Then I suggest that once it's placed, you play it safe and seal in all of the edges of your masks with some Tamiya tape, and that's to prevent overspray. On each one of these masks for the Hinamaru, once it's placed, Again, gently press it down with your finger, making sure that the edge of the mask is firmly against the surface. Um, I've said it before in this video, you want to prevent bleed through. And the most effective way to do that, aside from using a fresh blade, is to just press down on your mask as much as you can. So now we have to figure out what shade of red to use when we're going to paint the Japanese Hinamaru or red disc. I've laid out a few decal sheets just to show that there really is no consensus to this. And there are a lot of opinions and a lot of discussion as to what this color ought to be. 
and I really can't tell you which which one you should choose. However, what works for me is a one-to-one -one mix of Tamiya Red with Tamiya Hull Red in their acrylic line. And that's what I've gone with for years now. And now that we have everything masked, ready to go, we can start painting. I'm using my Tamiya high grade airbrush with any airbrush it will do for this type of work. The paint mix is my usual one part paint to one part thinner. And I believe the pressure I'm using uh, when I paint these particular markings is no different than anything else. So about uh, between 15 and 20 PSI. Uh, the important thing that I want to say, though, is when it comes to painting masks, you you wanna you wanna do a couple of things to avoid bleed through. So before we we really pressed down on the mask when we were pl placing them onto the model, now what I'm trying to do is not spray into the edge of the mask. I'm either 90 degrees, like completely perpendicular to the mask, or I'm spraying inward to the center of the um, of the marking and I'm using light coats. So instead of flooding the, uh, the, the marking with one go, I'm going light coat, going to the next one, light coat, going to the next one, and slowly building up the color. And all this is to prevent bleed through on the mask. After a few layers, I can't remember how many, but at least a half dozen, you're going to get to this point of opacity with the red on your markings. Um, a little bit at a time, gradually building up the color and making sure that you don't get bleed through. So here we have our completed paint job. It's moment of truth time. So what I'm gonna do is unwrap this kind of like a gift. It's always a fun part of the build to see whether all of that masking was effective. I'm always hopeful, maybe a little bit anxious that there's a little bit of bleed through. It's always kind of fun too, just to unpackage it and see the final result of all that work. I'll speed it up for you.
Here is the final result. As you can see with the painted markings, they all conform wonderfully with the surface. They get in the panel lines and all the rivet holes as well. I find it's just a little bit easier to do this than to worry with decals. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comments and please like and subscribe.